Hello and welcome to this video guys. Today we're going to look into a custom login screen. So first things first, we have a route which essentially uses a component called login component that we're going to have here. The first thing I usually do is just adding some HTML boilerplate. You want to have a form and you want to have the submit which is essentially going to be triggered whenever the button is clicked. That will be the function. Uh, you're going to have a login text uh, you will have a form control for an email or username or whatever you want it to be. You could also have this similar thing for the password. And you want to have a button which will trigger this. I can also see that this one should essentially have the password and not email as we saw before. We also have the IDs here. The reason to why we have IDs is it's, it's good for um, uh, web accessibility standards, uh, VCAG, and it's also good for whenever you're pressing on the label it will automatically select the input field. So if we save this obviously it won't work because we don't have this function yet so let's go ahead and, and call a add a function called login. The login function will essentially just call an API and pass in the username and email. So as you can see it does not look good at all so let's go ahead and add some CSS and uh, we'll add one for the form to center the form within the screen so we'll have a max width 400 pixels, we'll have some margins from the top so that it does not appear right under the menu. You want to have some padding around it so that it's it's a bit fresh and you have some space and air to, to work with. Uh, we want to have some box shadow and some border radius. We save this, you'll see that it's it's appearing here. 80 pixels from the top menu. It's easier to, to, to read and to utilize it. Next thing, we want to add some styling for the H1 so that it doesn't have too much spacing to the top. Also, we'll change the color and add a underline here. Uh, we'll go ahead and create something for the form control that we have. So each control item, we want to have a margin bottom so that they don't appear right under, it, uh, under each other. I usually set display block for the input and the label so that they are on different rows. Uh, we are going to give the label some styling, some font weight, some margin bottom so that there's some air around it. Also, we're going to give some padding, max height, border radius, some width uh, and color to the input field so that it appears in this way. This looks much more nicer than it was before. And we also want to add some stylings for the button. Usually this is something you would create a component for, for the input field, for button, so that you won't, wouldn't have to rewrite the code. You could also, if you don't want to have any components, you could move the styling to a global place so that it would be ap applicable for the whole application. As for this, we're only going to keep it within this component file because it's for visibility purposes, but just keep in mind that you should also be thinking about globalizing it. So now we have a login screen. We also want to have some outlining, some focus states. So we're going to add some, some mix-ins for the focus state. Usually you create the mix-in once and you can apply it for the input field. You can apply the same mix-in for the button. This would, whenever you focus on the field, you would see that it would automatically appear here like this. All right, so once this is done, you have the boilerplate to actually create the logic. So in this case, we're going to use re reactive forms. And in order for us to actually use it, we need to import it uh, in the module where the component is created. So in this case, it's within the login component. So I would have to import a reactive forms module here. Once that's done, we can go ahead and continue with the reactive forms. So what you would want to do is you would first and foremost just create a, a variable called login form. There's different ways of actually creating the form group that we're going to use here with reactive forms. So here's one way of doing it. So we do, you would create it like this. You would have the not username, but rather email here. And if you do it in, in this way, you need to, to create an instance of a form control within it. But it will be initialized immediately. So now we can go ahead and use it here. So for the input field, we say form control, and we're going to pass in the login form dot controls dot email. This is one way of actually doing it, but what we want to do is essentially use the form control name instead. So then you need to, to set the form group here, and then you can pass in the, the variable that we had, so login form in this case, and then instead of having to write all of this boilerplate code, we can say form control name, and it's going to be the email, and it will automatically snap that from the login form. 
Same thing can be done for the password. So we're going to copy and paste because I'm, I'm so lazy and we're going to set a password here. So now we have, we have bound our form with whatever is coming from the um, uh, TS file. So now we can listen to changes. So if I would have the constructor here, usually you would want to put this as well within, for instance, ng on init and so on. But just for visibility purposes, we want to see what is happening. Do we receive changes? And as you can see here, we are actually receiving the form field changes whenever we we are typing something. So we have a a form which essentially is listening to changes and it's connected to the uh, to the to the HTML here. So now what we can do is usually we'd have a login function. Within the login function, you would trigger some change uh, and call the API that you have in backend. Backend would respond with with maybe a JWT token, and you would have to store it maybe in local storage, cookie storage, se session storage. It all depends on what and when you need it to be used. So. What we can do, usually what I do here is you don't listen for changes. You don't need the constructor here either. So what you can do is you can say, hey, if this the login form, if it's invalid, I would just bail here because this is essentially saying that something's wrong with the field and you should not be able to continue with it. Maybe we can have some validators. You can say, hey, uh, this is have this this needs to be required. Usually this is an email as well, so we would have to to set more than one. You could also say validators.email. This is something that's built in within the reactive forms, so the email validator and the required validator. If you want to have more than one, you need to pass it as an array. If you only want one, you can pass it like this. So if I would now submit, we can just add an alert calling backend to login. All right, so if I would have a successfully or have a field that I actually can use to call back and now I have something automatically inputted from Chrome. So when I press this, it would say calling back into login. If I now would just remove it and I click login, nothing will happen because this will be blocked by this row here. So and you can see we don't have any error output error login. I have another video which I will link to on how to create a customized input component that can be reusable in different places. Please have a look at that. And this, my friends, is how you can create a login form within 10 minutes. Thank you for watching. All the best. Bye.